I became aware of this project many months ago, and I didn't know all the details until about uh, six weeks ago. And three weeks ago, held a press conference in Mobile to discuss the mismanagement in the Alabama Department of Transportation. I named three projects, the Mobile Bay Bridge fiasco in I-10 in Mobile. Should have been built a long time ago. The, I, this, this project we're talking about, the Highway 43, the West Alabama, I call it the West Alabama boondoggle. And the I-65 never-ending bridge project. Y'all, y'all ever, do you know on I-65 in Evergreen, you ever drive that? Y'all are over here. They've been building a bridge on I-65 at the Evergreen exit since I was uh, knee-high to a grasshopper. But today, as we launch this bus tour, I want to talk specifically about what I call the boondoggle. One of the issues I frequently hear about is concern over how our state tax dollars are being spent, especially our gas tax dollars. The ones that Governor Ivey raised, uh, raised by 55%. Think about that, 55% on a percentage basis tax increase. Seems to be no accountability. And when large government projects are rolled out, folks almost expect there's going to be overruns, financial mismanagement. And this goes hand in glove with the concerns and the frustrations. Frustrations over the amount of control that insiders and special interests have over our governor and their budgets. Frustration that our state government seems responsible only to those that have lobbyists. So what's going on? And that's what concerns me about the West Alabama boondoggle. And this is a whopper of a boondoggle. This is the pinnacle of fiscal mismanagement at the state level. On the face of it, if you think about the idea of creating a West Alabama transportation corridor, it's not a bad idea. Economic development, open up a new area of the state, it sounds good. But the governor announced that she'll pay for this with $750 million in state gas tax dollars. The total, the total state gas tax that comes in to the, into the coffers the DOT coffers is $900 million. So this effectively would wipe out a year's worth of gas tax on one project if you built it at one time. This is nuts on steroids. It's math. It's simple. This also means that she is foregoing the federal matching dollars and sticking the entire financial cost of this project on the taxpayers of Alabama, about a billion dollars, it's unheard of, all to widen the road, which according to the Alabama Department of Transportation's own data, has some of the lowest traffic counts of major highways in the state of Alabama. Now you have to ask yourself, why would anyone want to spend $750 million in state gas taxes and forego $2.5 billion in federal matching? If you put all your state money in one bucket, you can't draw the federal matching dollars. So effectively, you are trading $700 million in state money for, for $2.5 billion in federal matching money. What kind of dummy would do this? It's the craziest thing I've ever seen. That's like me saying, I'll give you $700 million, but I'm not going to do it because you're, you're going to give me $2.5 billion. It's nuts. 
Kay Ivey sold Alabama on her gas tax by saying we need more state dollars so that we can draw down more federal matching dollars and then she wants to use it all up on one project. Everybody, everybody tracking with me? I'm just, this is crazy. Ivy was willing to not just pass the largest gas tax in the history of this state, but she signed off legislation that the gas tax will, be, will rise forever. We call it the never-ending gas tax. It just rises and rises until the cows come home without a legislative vote. Now, now she's saying we don't need the federal money. And she's opting to spend hundreds of millions of dollars on a road that does not qualify for federal matching because it's the traffic. The traffic out here is a fraction of the traffic compared to other needed projects in Alabama where the traffic count and the congestion are many multiples greater than this one. This is Webster's Dictionary definition of a boondoggle. At a minimum, this is a financial mismanagement of the worst kind. But there's more. There's always more. I have been speaking quietly to property owners up and down the corridor, the 43 and the 69 corridor. What is clear to me is that the Alabama Department of Transportation is building this road by running over people. They're frustrated. They're saddened. Some are mad. They are aggressively using something called eminent domain to take property to use it for public purposes. Eminent domain is this. It is, the, it is the police powers of the state. The police powers that, be, that should be used only, only when there is a clear and proven public interest. It should never be used if the threshold is not met. The threshold on this project is not even close in this case because the needs in other areas for this federal money is much greater. The DOT is taking lands from people, and I've talked to them, that have lived here for over a century, generations, black, white, rich, poor, everybody. They're bullying them telling them they have no options. They're saying, oh, it's a done deal. This is the truth. It ain't, it ain't a done deal if I win this election next week. I'm going to stop it dead in its track. You didn't know I could do that, did you? I can. You see, the DOT is controlled by the governor of Alabama. Governor can do whatever he wants to, or she wants to do. And I'm going to stop it. I'm just not going to stick to almost a billion dollars in one project and give up two and a half billion in federal matching dollars. I will not commit 750 of your hard earned gas tax dollars to a project that is low priority compared to the other needs in the state. And I'm going to show you some of them. And I will absolutely never allow the DOT to take people's homes, folks' homes, for a project that is unnecessary at this time. It is the responsibility of governors to stand up for private property rights and protect the homeowners and farmers of this state where the rich, poor, black, white, everybody. I'm a governor for everyone. It shouldn't need a lobbyist. The governor should be their protector. Kay Ivey's failing everyone here. She's letting the Department of Transportation bureaucracy and the cronies run wild. Who is helped by the government using its 
police powers of eminent domain on a road that has traffic counts as low as this. Road builders, maybe. The BCA, maybe. Economic developers, I don't know. Woke corporations, casino developers, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. I just know it makes no sense. Let me tell you who's not being helped, the taxpayers and the homeowners who don't want to sell their property or their home at any price. They're not for sale. It needs to stop right now. This is one example of Kay Ivey's failure to protect regular folks in Alabama. She failed to protect the taxpayers when she blew through $1.5 billion state government surplus and gave it away to special interest and quasi-government agency. Didn't give it back to the people. Didn't cut the sales tax on groceries. She just handed it out like Santa Claus to stuff that's nice, but it's not a priority. It doesn't matter. She failed to protect family budgets when she refused this, this, this grocery tax to toll or stop or pause this gas tax. Failed to protect the smallest of our businesses by doing nothing on the occupational taxes. These people like to tax. They like the money. Failed to protect our children when she signed off fu funding for the first transgender school in Alabama. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Y'all seen the television? It's the saddest thing I've ever seen. She paid for it. It's a form of child abuse, emotional child abuse of children right here in Alabama. A school where the faculty and teachers held a queen drag show for these children in Birmingham. Sixth graders, little ones. The buck stops with the governor. I'm running for governor because I've had children, three of them here, and spouses and grandchildren. And I look at this country, I know it's time to say no more. It's time to fight back. We have a war going on between common sense and crazy in the nation. Some governors are fighting to protect their states. Kay Ivey has been asleep at the wheel. I'll put the people of Alabama first. I will protect our small businesses, farmers, from Marxism and from this big woke corporations that try to hold them and their workers hostage. I'm going to repeal Gay Ivy's, Kay Ivey's gas tax and eliminate the tax on groceries. I'm going to end earmarking our budgets. So you put the money where it's needed. Did you know there's a crisis in Alabama in public health and mental health? Did you know there's a fentanyl problem in the state of Alabama? Did you know that I-20 coming from the West Coast through Texas, through Shreveport, through Jackson, through Meridian, through Tuscaloosa, through Birmingham, through Atlanta, is the highest human traffic highway in the nation? We've got 450 troopers. We're supposed to have 900 on our roads. So instead of putting money into things that matter, they're wasting it on crazy stuff like this. I will appoint a team of forensic accountants to review every budget item in every contract. The days of pork barrel spending are coming to an end. I won't tolerate federal mandates I won't tolerate a government forcing its people to take a vaccine against their will and forcing children to wear masks in public schools against their parents' will. I'll make the Alabama health officer a cabinet-level position, like Fauci, at the state level. So the governor is responsible, not some unelected official. 
I respect parental rights in the classroom. I will eliminate common core, critical race theory, all this garbage. It's Marxist. They're attacking your children. There's nothing new under the, sun, under the sun. It's time to put prayer back in our schools. We removed prayer in the early 60s. It was illegal ruling. It was unconstitutional. And all hell has broke loose in our public schools ever since. I'm going to stop the push, the LBGTQ agenda of pushing this on our children in any, every single school in Alabama, I will not tolerate it. And I will replace the LGBTQ agenda with what we call the PPP, PPRRR agenda, which is prayer, parents, and reading, writing, and arithmetic. If you're, if you're 60 years old, you probably remember where that was first coined in 1978 on a guy, guy that got himself elected governor riding around in a yellow school bus. Y'all don't know who I'm talking about? Anybody? Some of you. I will stand up for the property rights of every Alabamian, communities, and homeowners like the folks up and down Highway 43 and 69. It's time, folks, to break the insider's grasp. These people are leading this governor by the nose for profit and power. I want to restore the power to the people. Elected officials, even governors, are answerable to the people, responsible to the people not to the special interest. I believe that Alabama will lead the nation because Alabama has not gone the way of the world. We stood for truth. We stood for right, righteousness. That means what, what righteousness is, is that we are in, in, we're living, we're operating in, under God's moral law and in an agreement in alignment with, with that is in the Word. By God's grace, as I stand before you today, I will be the firewall against the things coming at this state. I will protect our people. I will protect your children, your grandchildren. I will defend our constitutional rights with every ounce of strength that I have in my body. I appreciate your vote. Thank you, and thank you for letting me come to Marengo County to talk about this issue. I have a, with me today, this is a, a map of the boondoggle. I want to point something out just to put this in context for everybody to see. Can you all hear me okay? Here's the boondoggle. Here we are in Linden, Alabama, in the heart of Marengo County, you got about 5,000 vehicles on the, up, on the upside of the boondoggle and about 3,000 vehicles a day below it. If you come on up, there's about 13,000 here around Moundville. Come on down this way towards Mobile, there's about 8,000 cars per day. Okay? Now let me put that in perspective of where money needs to go at that $2.5 billion they're willing to give away. I-85 between Montgomery and Auburn, 40,000 cars a day. I-65 down here around Clanton, 71,000, up to 100,000. Over 100,000, I-20, 565, 100,000. Other projects are more demanding across the state where you have tremendous traffic counts and congestion and friction and safety issues. I will be honest, if this project met the requirements to receive federal matching dollars, that would be a different issue. But it doesn't. And I'm not going to allow almost a billion dollars to be spent on this 
and cost us $2.5 billion that we can spend across this state. If I did, you ought to kick me in the rear because it makes no sense. I'd love to answer any questions or thoughts. Yes, sir. Just about as quick as I take an oath into office. All right, y'all heard me. Now, I will tell y'all something. They are, they have led a contract the, on the bypass here, <laughs> the Linden Bypass. The Linden Bypass did receive federal money, okay? It's not part of the total boondoggle. Now, they, it has been let. I don't think it's been awarded. But what I'm going to stop for, for sure, because if they award the contract, they go to work before I'm governor. I'm going to stop this whole thing. We're not going to put the money there. They know it's coming. These people, what I'm telling you, I promise you, the director of transportation knows everything I'm telling you. I don't know if the governor gets it. But they know what they're doing. The question is why? Why are they doing this? It's not like West Alabama is a population center. If I was going to take, if I was going to take a hundred million bucks in West Alabama, I would, I would probably improve 43 and 29, I mean 69, w w widen them a little bit in the right of way, maybe put a passing lane on the uphill lo slopes like you see on 231, US, uh, Alabama 5. Now, I, I was educated at Auburn. We know how to build roads. This is, by the way, this is what we've done in my life, so I know a little bit about it. But they know what they're doing. I don't know why. Maybe somebody here can tell me the why. You know, this thing is 600 feet wide. You know, that the, sounds like the interstate. The, uh, it is. It's, uh, the football field is 160 feet. Okay? This thing is 600 feet wide. I, I don't get it. I don't get it. You can build most four-lane, divided highway, four lanes, 225 feet wide. Now, maybe if you're in some heavy mountains where you have huge back slopes, you need a little more. But ain't you no know, big mountains between here and Tuscaloosa, is there? You might get a little bit as you go in, but not, it's not very, you don't have a lot of elevation. Any other questions? We got to get you elected. That's right. Everybody got to vote for you. We don't have any more options. We may have the Indians, but I don't think so. We may have the Corps of Engineers, but I don't think so. Because they have not even applied for the permit. Right. That's right. Thank you. That's a, that's a, that's, I'm not, that's, a, that's my advertisement right here. You want to say that one more time? <laughs> Any other questions or thoughts? I won't, I don't want to take up everybody's time. We really appreciate your coming. We, we uh, appreciate having our attorneys Who's your attorneys? Where's your muscle? Right here. We're going to put you guys out of work. <laughs> I'm elected. You fellas are out of, out of a, a dog fight. <laughs> what else? What about? Yes, sir. Where do you stand overall on the property rights? It's the cornerstone of, uh, of Western civilization since the Magna Carta. It's the foundation of, of, of what this nation is granted. And your, I mean, your constitutional rights, is, it, it's everything. Property rights, life, liberty, the pursuit of happiness, all, this is all encompassed in private property rights. This, what made me mad about this, and I mean mad, the money thing is, is what it is. And that's just, that's a different kind of a thing. But if you're going to walk in and a government is going to take your house and you say, I don't want to sell my house. And they'll say, well, I'm going to pay you well for it. But I don't want to sell it at any price. I've lived here. My great-grandfather, my family, this is generational. And the government says, I don't care what you want. I'm going to take your house. We're going to condemn it. We're going to pay you for it. 
and we don't care because we want to build this project and we can't and just and we're going to take it just because we can for a project that is not needed is not timed right is foolish I've never seen this before and I've seen some crazy stuff in my life and that's exactly what's going on here I can't I, that's what I keep asking it's it's so crazy that they would go this far with this much opposition and it's so dumb financially and there's no arguing there's no defense to it y'all got to figure it out because I'd like to know I'd like to know the why did you know the governor is also the chief law enforcement official in the state of Alabama did you know that the executive power is the enforcement division of the state attorney general is a lawyer it is the governor who enforces these things you know a lot of times when you you smell a rat you smell something you, you don't know it you don't understand it but you know there's something smelly right it's 2.5 billion smelly reasons that something doesn't make sense. Anything else? Well, thank y'all so much for letting me stop by. I appreciate it. Thank you, sir. All right. Good to see you. Yes, ma'am. Good to see you, sir. All right. All right. And you did say that the Linden Bypass did receive federal money. Is, is it separate things? Because it's that a, only concerned me. No, no. It's the, it's the Linden Bypass. Yeah. They're telling me it's federal money on that. It, that's a different something. I think right. so. That's the only thing that affects How you doing?